Okay, it's noon on a given Thursday. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech, and we have an exciting discussion about reforestation in Hawaii. Wow, exciting. Okay, and we have Leslie Cole Brooks. She's been in and around environmental and energy things for the last oh, 60, 70 years, isn't it, Leslie? Um, and she's an attorney. Watch Hi. out. Okay. Hi, Leslie. Thank you for coming around. <laughs> All right, yes. and we have yes. Susan Cordell yes. and Rebecca Ostertag. You, you want to try to introduce them at least a little bit, Leslie? Sure, sure. So uh, today we're going to talk about Bill 178 that passed the Hawaii County Council. It's a really exciting bill for reforestation and forest preservation. And we've all been working together as, as, a, as a team to get this through, and they, it's just been a great team. So. Um, First, uh, Dr. Becky Ostertag. She's a professor of biology. She's at UH Hilo. And uh, she's been working on um, forest restoration for a long time. And she knows a lot about trees. And uh, she really gets out there and, and likes to likes to weed, I think. <laughs> and you can't, you can't avoid what was that, it. And what was that poem? There was a poem, I think I shall never see something as lovely as a tree. Yes. Yeah. Okay. You coming. probably have that inscribed right. on your wall at home. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Leslie, Later. please continue. Um, and then uh, Dr. Susan Cordell, she's um, with uh, the Institute of Pacific Forestry, and she also has been working on the, on um, uh, restoration ecology and reforestation. And she and Becky have been working together, and um, they're just uh, it's a dream team. That's what it is. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, great. Um, so, uh, Leslie, let, uh, let's talk about that bill. What does it say? Um, and uh, what, what is the effort? And when will you actually engage with the legislature on it? Well, we did that and we're done. So uh, we've been working on this all year and the bill passed just this a uh, uh, couple of weeks ago, August 17th. And uh, it, it was Bill 178. And what it did is we updated the Hawaii County Code for Native Forest Preservation and Restoration. So we, um, it's kind of a long story, but we all ended up realizing we were working on the same thing and uh, got together, looked at the county code and said, how can we make this better? So we'll really support preservation and restoration of native forest here. So it's signed into law now. It is, yes. Okay, and yeah. what does it provide? So we'll go into, uh, well, it does several things. Um, uh, first and most interesting, it creates new categories of native forest dedications. It's really an interesting way of looking at resilience and at restoration work. We also uh, work to ensure that the timing of the tax incentive goes into place once you start the work. And we worked on the money, of course, too, to make it more advantageous because it's not easy work, and it's a labor of love, and you should benefit from that. What's but, the money? Uh, what's the, the money category. thing? Does it cost money to do this? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it 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 does because anybody that has tried to do anything out in their yard, in their window box, outside of their kitchen window, out on a hundred acres, a thousand acres of forestry, knows that it takes money. It takes a lot of elbow grease, but it takes money to do. And so what the dedication does is if you're a property owner, you can set aside a certain amount of land and you promise through a commitment that's recorded on your deed to protect and or restore, depending upon what you're doing, that property for a certain amount of time. <clears throat> and uh, you get a reduced property tax for the duration of that dedication. What's the reduction? What percent? Uh, you know, it really depends. Um, I know it seems like that would be just a simple answer, but it's not. It's anywhere on average from $150 a year to $1,500 a year or more. Um, it depends on the size of the, of the dedication. It depends on what type of dedication. It depends upon the, the, the market rate of the property. Uh, there's a lot of different- Okay, so whatever, whatever, the, uh, whatever the, uh, the formula is, um, yeah. is this working? I mean, is, it all, this, is this bill already operating? This act already you know, doing stuff? Um, or you have to wait and see? And how do you know that people are going to respond to the in incentive? 
Well, um, so the bill goes into effect January 1st, 2021. You need to get your application in by September 1st of that year in order to have it considered. Oh, so, so you'll know you'll know in September. Yes, um, but that's by the way, September. Am I right about this? September, uh, Leslie. I don't want to tell you anything you don't know. September is now. Of next year. It goes into effect. Oh, next year. Okay. That sign. Right. <laughs> but uh, there is already a native forest dedication in place. And what we did is we upgraded, we amended it to bring it here and make it work for what's going on now. So there are already 129 dedications and over 68,000 acres that have already been dedicated. Oh, that's great. What's, that's really good and news. It, Susan, are I you excited add, about that? Of oh, course. Sorry. Yeah. And if I could add something to um, what Leslie's talking about, one of the key things uh, and our uh, motivation behind working on this bill is that it puts uh, doing forest restoration on par with other land uses. So right now, having a pasture is the cheapest tax rate you can get. We wanted to also give incentives for people to have forests on their lab and by having forest or restoring back to getting forest, which is a long, lengthy and expensive process, we want to give people incentives that are equal to the incentives or similar to the incentives that they're doing for other land uses like pasture. So when that's what's really exciting about this you. bill is that it elevates the role of forest in Hawaii for, for individual property owners. Understood. When you say that, are you including very important lands under the Agriculture, Agriculture Incentive Act? That, that's when you designate the owner designates the land as very important land and there's all kinds of tax benefits that flow by using yes. the land for agricultural purposes. Yes, these would be most, and I think in almost all cases, they'd be things that had been zoned under agriculture. Is that correct, Leslie? Yes. That they would have been setting them aside, a certain amount aside to do forest, to, to maintain either in native forest or to do restoration. Okay. Right. Well, Susan, I just wanted to ask you, Susan, why, why should I care about this? <laughs> well, <laughs> a lot, uh, you know, for those of you, you know, for those of the listeners that don't know, Hawaii is a very unique place with very endemic and unique biodiversity. And um, we've been losing a lot of it. And for a lot of different reasons, we've been losing it. We've been losing it because of land use change, because of disturbance because of invasive species are highly problematic. And so um, in order for us to preserve and protect these iconic species, for example, Ohia forests, um, we, need to, um, we need to include the public in helping us. You know, it can't just be land management agencies that can do this, and especially on the big island where people own large tracts of land and often do have native forest on them. It's great that they have this opportunity to put these aside and protect our native forests. And so um, really excited about doing this. We've been trying to do restoration for many, many years and it's very challenging. So some of the changes that we made to this new tax bill are really making it much easier for landowners. And we can go into those categories if you're interested. Oh yeah, if we have time, but uh, let me ask you, um, so why, why do I care about reforestation? You know, I mean, apparently we were losing trees up to this point. Otherwise, oh. you guys would not have put the effort into the bill. Well, well Jay, uh, do you, like, yeah, do you right. like fresh water? Yeah, I'm, I'm a big I'm a big fan. <laughs> yeah. Do you well, like good. sun protection and <laughs> like clean that. air? Yeah, yeah and I like that. What about coral reefs? You know, coral reefs. <laughs> so you're saying it's connected health. to every other element in the environment? Yes. Yes. Okay, and if we did nothing about it, what would happen? We're losing more and more forest in Hawaii over time as people develop, as we get um, invasion by uh, species that are not native to Hawaii that are very fast growing and reproducing very quickly, both native and both uh, non-native plants and animals. And that's de basically degrading our environment. And without those, ecosystem services like water, uh, recharge of water, uh, the purification of, of the atmosphere, all of those services, um, biodiversity are really important to maintaining our way of life here in Hawaii. When we lose forest, wherever this has happened in the world, 
the quality of life and public health has declined precipitously. We need the forests. And the Hawaiian Islands were predominantly forest before people got here. So getting them back to some state of forestation is vital for our entire island system. Well, what kind of trees do you like? I mean, Elbesia is kind of invasive, isn't it? You don't like Elbesia too much. Eucalyptics, you like eu eucalyptus? In this bill, um, we have allowed, uh, there's designations for a native forest, a dedication or native forest restoration. In that category, you have to have at least 60% native forest cover. You also have to have a species list for your property. And um, that species list in the management plan that the owner develops will be scrutinized to avoid highly invasive species. So there's a lot of really good work done by CGAPS and Hawaii Invasive Species Council in Hawaii that's been developing the weed risk assessment. We use that science to try to determine the best species that are gonna fit um, on uh, properties in Hawaii and avoid the highly invasive species that are going to spread. So, so we want to support. Yeah, right, El Elbesia is invasive, so you El wouldn't favor that. But no. uh, eucalyptus, eucalyptus is not invasive, and you might fe fe feature that. Some yeah. eucalyptus are invasive. Eucalyptus is a very big group. Some of them are listed as invasive, some of the species, and some are not. Hmm. Do your, do your uh, students come from miles around to talk about this with you in your environmental classes? I mean, are you a popular teacher where they spill out into the passageway? <laughs> um, well, someone wrote that I was the, the best on my board outside my office a few days ago. So <laughs> okay. I guess I'll say that I'm a popular teacher. Um, and it's, a, you know, the, the thing that's exciting about being a student here in Hawaii is the chance to really get to Malama Aina, to get to go on field trips, to get to work on the land, to get to see all these different environments. And that's something that we have here on the Big Island that you cannot really replicate anywhere else. Oh yeah, in many ways. It's not only uh, the terrain, it's the people. <clears throat> but let me ask you this, you know, I went to New Zealand a few years ago and I, and I walked the Milford Track. Uh, which is beautiful, beautiful, across the top of the mountains and all beautiful. Um, and I found that the students in the universities of uh, New Zealand came around and maintained the trail, maintained the flora and fauna. They were actively involved as volunteers. They would spend the whole summer, for example, doing that. Um, what about the students at uh, UH Hilo? Did they come around and spend the whole summer planting trees? Oh, definitely. We have students that are very involved in all kinds of Aina activities. We have active internship programs here, like the Pacific uh, Internship Program for Exploring Science, the PIPES Program. We have many grants, um, the Kehaloa Program, the LSAMP Program, that provide students with these kinds of activities and internships, working with faculty, working with different agencies, um, students. We have a sustainability club on campus. We've got a geography clubs. They're all doing lots of environmental work, lots of field trips. This is kind of the lifeblood of why students want to come here. We also uh, get many students from all over the country that want to come to um, specifically Hilo on exchange just to be involved in our environment and get to That's experience great. That's these great. kinds of things. We need that. We need to reinforce that. So, you know, uh, in fact, Leslie, um, the state of Hawaii has a um, huge deficit this year because of COVID. I mean, I think it's uh, over what, $2, two billion. It's big for Hawaii, uh, two billion and change. Um, and, you know, the CARES Act kind of stopped in the middle. We don't have a, a second chapter of the CARES Act. And the state is going to be called on to spend money to save people's lives here in the next uh, few weeks or months. Um, where is it going to get the money for the trees? Where is it going to get the money to, to uh, implement this, this, uh, this plan? Well, the way this works is that it's the property owner that does the investment. So it's not a cost to the county. Um, there may be a slight cost, uh, the estimate based on all of the existing dedications, uh, if these changes were made, which it passed and so they are being made, of approximately $10,000. So it's a very, very, very small cost to the county for the changes in the tax, the tax application. But when you consider the environmental benefits of clean water, native forest restoration, species, habitat, all of that, it's very small, but the, you're right that it's expensive, but it's borne by the property owner. 
And that's the beauty of this is that it's, it's an investment that an individual person is doing for the benefit of everyone. Who does the work? I mean, when I say that, sorry, who does the, the managerial, the administrative work to make this happen? You mean who on the individual property? Oh, you have a statute. You have a statute with a plan and incentive. Um, well, you you have to have somebody keep, keeping records, uh, somebody, you know, right. ap applying the incentives. Yeah. Yes, it's the, it's the Hawaii Property Tax Division. And in fact, we have um, gotten an intern through UH, actually um, a gentleman, Sebastian Wells, who is a student of, um, of Becky's. And uh, he is doing an internship to create these templates and make sure that the paperwork is just seamless. So it's very easy for the county to administer. Be because we did consider that, we wanted to make it easier for the property owners, but also easy for the county to make assessments, decide what passes muster, what doesn't, and uh, to be able to do that without it, without it taking up a lot of time or work. So. Yeah, well, I think the big thing in a, in a bill like this is this is a kind of adventurous. I don't know if there are other bills in other states, but at least for Hawaii, I think this is very important. And so, Susan, um, how do you make this sustainable? You know, because what happens really more often than not is you, you, you pass a bill like this, you take a look at how it works, uh, and then you tune it up going forward. And you have to have the flexibility and the support, ongoing support in the legislature to do that. Um, so where are we? I mean, what do you think will have to be tuned? Those algorithms you were talking about, and about exactly what the, you know, the tax breaks are and so forth, they may have to be tuned up um, and have, may have to be expanded, maybe more tax breaks if it doesn't, it doesn't have the desired effect or less tax breaks if you find out that too many people are you know, being excused for too much tax and so forth. Um, do you have your eye on the future here? What is the future? Uh, I think maybe that question would be better answered by Leslie in terms of uh, uh, of the procedures and protocols. Um, Leslie, do you want to answer that question? Sure. So in, in short, every year the county determines what the tax rates are for different classifications. So that's how they're doing their fine tuning of their budget anyway. And in this case, the new classifications are tied to other classifications through a percentage. So as things adjust, kind of like a water level, the rate for the native forest will adjust. It will go up, it will go down. It will depend upon what's happening with the county budget. And that is determined every year, depending upon what the need is. So, um, and then of course, like one of those science experiments where it can never get too hot because when it gets too hot, it kills the, you remember that one where- it Yeah, it's like the, the Archimedean principle, right? You remember that. Yeah, it's so, self-adjusting, yeah. Self -adjusting. Let me go back to Susan. Susan, so what, what's left for you to do in the Institute? Um, is, there, is other people handling all this or what, what's left for you? Well, I think that responsibility I feel that I want to carry forward with this is to convey that this is an opportunity for the public to help us and to get engaged in something that is such a feel-good, positive action. Um, I, to me, one of the most exciting things about this bill, which um, is the fact that it's not just that people can plant things, but if you have lava on your property, which is very common here on the Big Island, um, lava substrates, a lot of people view that as just sort of, you know, they don't think it's worth anything or have any value. It's like a trash land. But to someone like an ecologist like me or Becky, we look at that and what we see is this is a a playground for all of the new seeds and species to come in and, and start a forest. So um, one of the great things about this tax bill is that you can actually set aside these lava lands and see restoration happen over time and encourage that. And so uh, that's one of the most exciting things that, that I feel about this bill. And then also that people can get this feeling of success because they don't have to get an all native forest on their property to um, benefit from this. And they can also have perhaps fruit producing trees or agroforestry trees to help support the native biodiversity. So I think my role, I feel like from here on out is to really just spread the word that this is available to people, encourage people to do this on their own lands and um, to, to um, yeah, just spread the word about the importance of native forests and how we need to protect them. You know, uh, after the plantations began to fail in, in Hamakua, 
um, and Javi and all that area, Big Island. Um, there was a there was a wood chip company. Yeah. Um, it failed because all the wood chips burned one day. <laughs> which was a bad thing um, but they were making money growing trees and then they were chipping the trees and selling the chips to Japan and this is not the only you know, entrepreneurial experience we've had growing and selling trees what, where's, where's the, the, the boundary between what you're talking about and entrepreneurs tree farmers if you will uh, landowners maybe big ones maybe big ones with political clout kind um, where's the boundary between what you're talking about, environmental things, um, and, and people who would actually sell the product, cut it down and sell it? Yeah, well, I, I agree with you that that's an important component. We need an economy and we need people to be able to have livelihoods that want to work off the land. And so, yeah, I, I think that there, we need to find a balance. And certainly um, plantation forestry is something that is also supported by the tax code. And um, there can be benefits, depending on how you do plantations, there can be ecosystem benefits that you can derive from that. And even if you chop down the trees and are using the, the value of the wood for something, then you regrow the trees back. I mean, we live in the tropics, so things grow very quickly here, often in those kinds of settings. There's also some of our native woods that are highly valuable, like poa, that you can do in a plantation style. And so you can not only get the benefits that, that COA provides to the ecosystem, but that also you can have a livelihood um, based on that. So I think there's an, a balance that can be had. Yeah, and, and we have to give credit to uh, whoever yeah. is doing that so they can stay in business. And that might include, depending on how the legal proceedings go, that might include who uh, knew So Rebecca, you know, uh, uh, I think both Susan and Leslie have talked about getting the word out um, and socializing this whole thing. It goes beyond university, your class, um, all that, because uh, in order to have an ongoing sustainable, what you call it, public opinion uh, mm -hmm. that will support this kind of project or expand it going forward, you need to get the word out. How, aside from think tech, which is a very important way to get the word out, how, how, how are you trying to get the word out to make everyone in town understand and support the project? Okay, great question. This is kind of where we're thinking as our next step. So as Leslie mentioned, we have an intern, Sebastian Wells, who's a, a UH Hilo student in the Tropical Conservation Biology Environmental Science Program. He's working on this aspect. He is gonna be spending time developing public outreach materials um, we are thinking about developing a postcard campaign, if we can, in partnership with others to get the word out to the public. We uh, want to develop webinars. Normally, we'd probably hold some seminars and public meetings, but given these COVID times, we'll probably go with web webinars that will disseminate out to the public and involve the public so that there's a lot of question and answers, because I imagine that individual landowners will have questions about how does this work with my property and those kinds of things. So it's really important for us to get the word out. I also view um, this partnership that we've developed with the Real Property Tax Division uh, in Hawaii County as a long-term partnership. I'm willing to work on this as it moves forward if changes need to be made and adjustments need to be made, particularly to the forest management plans that the landowners write. Those are, or to our species list, we're providing the public with suggested species, lists of nurseries so they can get the information, list of forestry professionals that may be able to help them develop their plans. So for us, the most exciting thing is if people actually do this um, and get the word out so that we get more forests because more forest in Hawaii is a win-win for everyone. It's a win for the landowner, but it's a win for the environment. And it's a win for our aina, our island. It's for, for all of us. And so the more people that we can get thinking about this, and it is, as Leslie mentioned, a big initial investment by the landowner. Um, but the more people we can get thinking about having more forest on the landscape, the better that's going to be for our forest and for our ocean. Yeah, I, and I know you're going to go, but I just I want to add one thought. And that is, don't forget NELHA, um, Natural Energy Laboratory of Hawaii Authority. I'm, I'm sure all you guys know about that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and I think uh, they would be interested in helping you do this uh, on both sides of the boundary. Uh, yeah, on that's the a great suggestion. Environmental side and also on the entrepreneurial side. Okay, we're going to take a break. Well, not a break, but we're going to let you go, Rebecca. Thank you so much. It's been really great to talk to you and to discuss more about Hawaii's forests. 
Thank you, Rebecca. Rebecca Ostertag, UH uh, Hilo. Thank you so much. Okay, we're going to talk to the rest of you guys now. Um, and Susan, uh, this is your big opportunity to to say how much you agree with Rebecca or not. <laughs> <laughs> Where, where are we going on this? What, you know, what is the natural kind of organic connection uh, between the Institute, which you, you need to describe that a little for us. And uh, I assume it's a nonprofit. I assume it's an environmental nonprofit. I assume it's been around for a few years. I assume you're you know, totally dedicated to it. But um, you know, what is the natural connection between you and uh, Rebecca and Leslie and, and the political establishment uh, of the Big Island? Well, I, I would be remiss if I agreed with you on all of that because we are not a nonprofit. We are actually a government agency. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> How come you didn't tell me this, Leslie? Only kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so um, so uh, the Institute of, is part of the USDA Forest Service, which is a national program. Um, oh, you said program. that, yeah. Yeah. And um, so we're part of the research and development branch of the Forest Service, and we're part of the Pacific Southwest Station, which is in California which has jurisdiction of California, Hawaii, and the U.S. affiliated Pacific Islands. Well, so that makes me want to ask you, you know, under the present administration, which some people feel is going to end in a few, in a few months, um, they don't like environmental, you know, initiatives very much. They rather have oil and gas and whatever, um, and, and they don't like to fund environmental efforts. Has yeah. that affected you at all, your institute? <laughs> I don't know if I'm supposed to speak about this on the radio, Jay, but um, no, we, we, no, we, our mandate and mission has stayed the same all the way through this administration through the past. So we're lucky that uh, we can continue doing our good work. And um, yeah, and so you asked previously about the connection with us, with the University of Hawaii and with Leslie. Um, that came together, Becky uh, and I have been working together for the past 20 years uh, doing research on restoration ecology. And we've, we've worked really hard to try and restore Hawaii's forests and we've found a lot of struggles and we've found some solutions along the way. So um, we've worked together on, on these projects and we were asked by the tax department to actually give a presentation on some of our work. And uh, Leslie then was in contact with the tax department and they pulled us all together and we immediately connected um, on this bill. And it really resonated because it's a dream when you're a scientist and you're actually doing research and you're doing work and that it actually, the outcome of it turns into something that becomes law that helps protect the environment. So I think uh, for me, that's been really satisfying and rewarding. Yeah, you're, you're a scientist. You mentioned that at the very front end. And I think that's very important, but why, why do we need a scientist in the Institute? Uh, how does your science support the efforts of the Institute? It, it, it doesn't sound complicated. I dig a little hole. I put a little tree in there. I cover it up with soil. That's it. <laughs> what, what, what science do I need? Yeah, you know, <laughs> you're right. <laughs> yeah, you know, um, <laughs> the, the biggest issue that a tree like that, that you planted doing that that method, if you planted that, the biggest problem that it would have is it would have it would get outcompeted by non-native species. The problem that we have here in Hawaii is that we have a huge influx of invasive species that are much more competitive than our native species in terms of growth. So um, what happens is land managers or homeowners, if they're going to do restoration, they spend all of their time dealing with invasive species. And it can cost thousands and thousands of dollars at, at an acre to maintain and keep out these invasive species to protect your, your native ones. And so we needed to come up with an alternative so that we can help the native biodiversity, but also reduce the impact of invasive species. So we came up with this sort of fantasy football model, if, if you want me to put it in those terms. Um, of um, Well, maybe we can help nature by picking species that have traits, you know, leaf size or deep roots or shallow roots that actually can play well together with native species and serve different functions. And so that you can actually make what we're calling a functional forest that includes native species and non-native species. So these non-native species are fulfilling a role that maybe 
um, native species that got ex that are extinct now serve. So well, it, you must love this work. It gives yeah. you a chance to create a, a, a theater of 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 natural of natural beauty, uh, and everything works. It's like I can hear the music. It's music there. It's it is. Yeah. Well, we're out of time, Leslie. I, I am sorry about this, uh, Susan. I, I really love this discussion. Uh, and I'm sorry Rebecca lost, uh, left too. But Leslie, uh, you know, uh, my, my final question is to you. And I, I wonder if you could, A, um, summarize what we've learned here today. And B, um, you know, leave a takeaway for people who have seen this show and, you know, would like that you would like to, them to uh, have a message from all of you. Okay, uh, well, I think to summarize, native forests are the way to go. And that the- <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Hawaii, well, we don't have much time. Uh, the county of Hawaii is really acting on it. I, I so admire them. We had three hearings and we got a unanimous approval all three times. It is just all, all guns blazing. That's probably not a good metaphor. All pistons firing. We are good to go. And for people that are feeling a little disheartened these days because of what's going on in the world, this is some good news because we're really looking to the future here. And this is going to set up policy that um, I'm hoping to take to other places. Oh, very really good. good. Ex yeah, exporting very exporting um, uh, environmental yeah. knowledge. I love that, yeah. In the really progressive research that Becky and Susan have been doing, and then I fill in on the law part and um, make it work. So this is the beginning of taking research and making it real and practical for regular people to invest and um, have a way to give back. Okay, what about the regular people? You're going to leave a message with them? You're going to tell them what the takeaway is, what they should be thinking about going forward? Well, um, to look for um, the, the webinar that we're working on for more detailed information on how to actually do this. There is some time because the application for the first go around of this new updated version isn't until next year. Um, and uh, meanwhile, to start putting some money aside and I think get uh, a really good shovel because the strawberry guava and the uh, guinea grass is still hard to get out. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Well, thank you, Leslie. Uh, Leslie Cole Brooks, she set this show up, and Susan Cordell. Thank you, scientist Susan. And let me let me also say that I I, I do want to have a further discussion with you at some point about the science you talked about about creating a, an environment that all works together. It's a beautiful thought. Uh, thank you so much, the two of you, and thank you to Rebecca uh, and Aloha, you guys. I hope we do this again. Thank you so much. Okay, great to see you again. Bye.